Wednesday, October 3rd, 2023. Well, the market crapped out yesterday. The Dow Jones Index was down 430 point, and that, but it's 1.3 percent. And you can see the VIX volatility index just spiked up. And today it looks like pre open. Pre open it spike and then around here, maybe a more quiet day. But yeah, you can see all this you can see the MACD is doing this on the volatility index. So you know, big nice juicy down about 200 days moving average broke through try to come back and then it just crapped out and the reason not much reason the thing is I was looking at the news yesterday and after market um yeah just nothing much well let's see private paper rose 89 thousand in September far below expectation ADP says eh, but that's private payrolls so um, it's just a little below expectation one single number might not be as meaningful but let's see if yeah expectation I say down from an upward revision 160 estimate okay just Smaller job gains some September. Okay, yeah. Well, ATP, oh, hold on. That's this one little line. ATP also set in a wages growth slow to 5.9%. 12 consecutive monthly decline. Okay, yeah, we have high inflation, but our wage growth has been on the decline for the last 12 months. Well, what does that mean? That means translate back into the American middle class just don't have much of disposable disposable income. That's what it really trans translates to not extra money to buy you know, extra goods for consumptions in that sense. First, of course, is you feel your basic need, that's where unemployment imp Numbers stay low is important because if most people, more people have jobs, more people can at least meet the basic necessities need. However, wage growth is important because does it stay afloat or tracking with inflation? That is important because well, the dollar a dollar today will be less tomorrow. So you tend to have to look out for your spending. However, if your wages continue to catch up, your income catch up with inflation, then you have you don't have to worry as much and you feel a lot more relaxed that you can spend extra and indulge here and there, like eating out, buying that nice item you always wanted or, or upgrade your vehicles and all that. But you don't have extra income or your income is shrinking then you hold off your, your spending in that sense especially on disposable income okay let's go back a bit to the market but that that's macroeconomic stuff um yeah spider yeah when approaching 200 days moving average qqqs qqqs is relatively stronger that was this is low but it's still at those level Russell 2000, yeah, making low three consecutive five down. Is it going to be able to get into five days socks? Like QQQ is holding, hold, holding up a little bit better. The financials, um, financial definitely, these are the weak. Yeah, the banks definitely crapped out. Yeah, energy, uh, oh, energy didn't do much. So it, it might come back. Um, yeah. Okay, USO. Oils, oil is around, yeah, oh, oil looks like it's going to get down a little. Dollar yen, what does that effect, effect have effect on dollar yen? Okay, it's rounding off a little. If this 
false hammer bar at the end of that. So um, you might have some, who knows, infighting indecisions going forward on that. Bitcoin, nothing. It's kind of just its own thing nowadays. 20 years treasury. That's interesting because usually bonds has inverse, inverse relationship with stocks. Stock goes down, people move money to safe haven, they buy bonds. But yesterday was not the case. Came in also because of the high interest rate environment, because of not tapering anytime soon, the Fed's not cutting back on the interest rate. So that also depress across the board all these investments, investable instruments go safe haven. So you have this, right? So if you don't go to bonds, move into gold, kind of like the safe haven instrument against the stock market. Um, so does that spill into the, wow. Yep, then, um, yep. So that yesterday, Asian market today, very at a low level, look at this, wow. Shanghai notch cap. Um, yeah. So everything looks gloomy. When market comes in, I'm looking for longs. Kind of like contrarian mindsets, kind of trying to be a step ahead of the mass of, of thinking. Um, oh, Apple, Apple helped pretty well. Well, right now, I forgot to say, market just opened 931. So now we're going to see. Um, so that's interesting because market crap out relative strength. Why is this guy holding up? That's good. So mark that. Hugo man, I came in for today. Yeah. Um, but still on the subtrend. Ooh. Uh, as a matter of fact, right at this breakout point. Um, makes me want to write some cares secure put. Yeah. Still too early. Market might take a breather and then you have to wait for the market. Okay, well these these are holding up relatively speaking. Yeah. So there you have it. The the sector it's relatively strong uh, compared to yesterday. Well, no, Amazon, Amazon took down too. Pretty big red bar, red candlestick. Ooh, Netflix. Yeah, that's, that's some fighting. But this, you have a huge drop, and then you have this. So it cannot go up, it cannot go down. It's just playing at this level, consolidation. Yeah. That have to work out with sell value. The longer that holds as a consolidation sideways, the more vicious the breakout is going to become up or down. But nobody know yet. Wait for confirmation always. Microsoft, okay. Yeah. So I am looking, looking at the candlestick pattern first. Everything, yeah, okay. Main focus still on the semi because the router is strong and I'm looking for longs right now as market comes in. I'm looking at relative strength, looking across the board on, on these semiconductors because that had been the strong of the year. Okay. Now I'm gonna switch right into Haganashi and Dojin channel. So this, is a Heiken Ashi on over there with Dojian channel, right? And you see, the Heiken Ashi is to identify trend. You can see very clearly right, across red across the board. One indecision Doji star, but all the candlesticks patterns to apply right, on this. But it's smooth out the calculation, so you have less whipsaw when you compare that. Over to the Dow, let's go over to the Dow. If you just look at the Dow, I, you have you have these in between. Well, if you switch into the Heiken Ashi, you have very smooth of direction of a trend in play. Right? And 
So it's at the bottom of volatility channel. You can continue to expand. This channel can expand and narrow. Okay, it's not absolute. Well, we still look at this point, these points. Right? So we broke this low. So this is the second next low. Um, okay, so basically, the way I play this is now it's in bear territory, the lower half of the Donchian channel. Donchian channel always have a medium line. The other half is we just label it as where the buyers are in charge, the bulls are in charge. Below the medium line is where the sellers are in charge. And you have a lot more selling pressure where that's a bear section. What I look for is right now is a trend, it's a downtrend. I'm not looking to short the market in that sense. So I have to wait for green bars and have to wait for it to cross back into the upper half, into where the bow section is on the Donchian channel. So I combine that with the Hakanashi candlestick pattern. Right, right now, right, so if we go back, right, let's look at the NASDAQ. Right, the NASDAQ is not as bearish. In fact, this is the one that will turn around before the S&P 500 before the Dong Jones. That's relative strength. Right, can you see very clearly? Right, so this is a period low. As potential support, the pipe peak in this, and this is right where my Donchian channel, the lower channel line, right now. I'm waiting to see if it will cost back up. Then I'm have a tray. Right now is in bear and on the my level two indicators is I do not want to buy it. Do not want to go in and buy anything yet. I use the, the bottom market as the first indicator. Right. Because here's the thing. These things get trade really heavily. A lot of money is an index as index fund. So every time when someone buy or sell index fund, guess what? All the underlying get and they pass through into all the underlyings, and all the stock in the index get a portion of it, be it a sell order or buy order in that sense. Which is why when the border market index move like the QQQ, the SPY. Diamond DIA, when they move, all the stock that are inside these index get affected. That's why we always say 50% of the stock's pricing is the, is the index, if it's in the index, and then 30%, 20 to 30% is the sector, and then only the leftover is actually reflect the, itself on the stock. Unless people just buy its own stock, right? But these index in instrument has a lot of money flow going in and out constantly. Because that's our 401k, that's the retirement fund. These are these are the when you in, when, when the big pension fund, the big institution invests, they in they put a lot more money into index because they they most you have the efficient fund to portfolio diversification effect instead of buying just one or ten stock. You hold hundred stock at least. So that's why. That's why I always need to look at the portal market and see what it's doing first and then I can go into the, the individual stock because that is going to get affected by that. So yeah, Apple right, broke this low. Right, it's seriously on the on, on, a, on a downtrend. First you need to climb back above the low and then over the medium line of the downtrend channel. Matter of fact, here's the thing. Looking, if you look at this, you can hack and actually it's very clear transform retracement, go back up, right? Buy here, break out, buy here, break, break out this, right? That 
is the this again I went over this this is the basic of how I play transforming so I will play play the crossover or play the breakout and I will look for also false hammer on my level one there's three places I can add once I identify a trend I'm waiting for a retracement and I wait for the counter to retracement where the trend reestablish itself again that was the trade of the year could bank out a lot that's 40 point move to capture as was for 25 percent of the stock current price within six months huge gain if you just stack up and keep adding every step of the way but you have to have a principle mythology and an understanding why we do this and how we do this without that it's very hard to stay with a trade because you must have conviction you're adding every level of the way up in that sense but right now clearly there's a retracement and then a second film wave maybe a third wave or maybe the third wave decide to above double bottom in the sense I slang the double bottom and jump back up I need it too so his hand and go back above I need buyers to come in I need to see strength before I can buy because I want to see this trend to resume I want to see this this whole trend so let's take a quick look and how much did it retrace well you can see it perfectly right here it's using the Fibonacci numbers well you, you might ask okay if you want to ask who's Fibonacci he's a mathematician who figured out a lot of the the that, that our world built in is this ratio like the shell spiral and all these ratio um, the leaf why why is why the, the way it branches out everything has ratio built in and it's kind of we can see clearly right now is at 0.38 which is now, one level, two level retracement. The next one is half, 50%. So it's right now 0.38 retracement on the second level, right here. Very clear. Yeah, the first one, it broke, it just went crap right through. Right? So so if this hold is good, otherwise, you have this next level is 50%, lowly, right here. This, this previous low, right? Um, so there's good to kind of keep in mind. They are not absolute. Nothing is absolute in trading. Things change constantly, right? If you can apply it, you can see it, okay, fine. But that can change right right away. It, can, it might not hold. That's the nature. That's the nature of the market. That's the nature of everything. Okay, let's take that out again. So, yeah, we can see that. We might have a level here that we might hold. And then we bounce off. And we cross back over. That was serious. Start thinking about getting my bull trades up. So, options, buy a stock, whatever I need to do. Um, um, but right now, as the market is in bear mode, I'm not doing anything. I'm not buying anything. I'm not writing any option, buying anything. If anything, now the question becomes if we retrace and it shows a hand, a long tail, well, that means I might want to short. I might take the other side instead. But the short will be a very short lift. And with the short, I will have to use, let's go to Apple. My level one indicators, especially the MACD. See if, all right, right now you see, here's the thing. This, looking at the MACD right away, I see a reversal signal, see? Oh yeah, divergence again. The instrument make lower low on the lows right, on the valley while our MACD moving average conversion divergence indicator makes higher lows that's a divergence that's a divergence that telling me hey I I'm gonna see likely reversals coming in and it's approaching is around this 200 days moving average area 
but this is important. This tell me tells me. Yeah, I'll color code it so I can see them as a pair. That you might see a turnaround. Again, nothing is absolute, but this divergence between the MACD and the instrument telling me, oh, I'm looking to enter more of a bull side than a buy, than a bear side of the trade, in that sense. So let's mark this. And that could be leading to itself to even a bigger trade, as it might retabulate this trend. How, when does it consider the trend is re -attabish? Well, when it breaks through the previous high, then it's going to go another wave again. And if we switch this to weekly, extend that to weekly, or even monthly, it become more clear. See, right here, right now. You have this weekly, which buys is a week now, and then you have this retrace button, and then I want to see a Continuation, break new high, and then the trend read establish itself. And it become a longer trend in that sense. But let's compress back to the daily. Right. right away you can see it's a lot more noises when you when, when you have a smaller time frame and it's a compressed down. Um, um, so daily is really the important one in that sense. And right now, one, two. Maybe even a third wave, and then it goes. So I'm building these possible scenarios in my mind. And what would I do if they do A, if it do B, if it do C? So you kind of prepare in ahead. That's a big part of investing and trading. You kind of need to envision what if and what to do. What are your options? What are your choices you can make? What a strategy you can play? And that's why trading investing is very complicated because there's so many possible outcomes. And it takes practice. It takes practice. And most people will see one or two things, or up or down. Eventually develop, it. oh, I'm seeing these mini waves. And then eventually see, oh, these are turnaround signals. And later on you say, Wow, this is how the setups I need to see, and I will enter the market. Setup A, setup B, setup C, setup D, E, F, G. A bunch of setup. Constantly you can see it in your mind, and which one you're gonna go with become. Yeah. And that takes time experience. It's a fun game, actually. It's, this is the best game in the world, I would say. Nothing big. This. And your bright product is making or losing money. In that sense. And now let's move on. All right, so Google, Meta, yeah. So already, uh, let's see, yeah, low peak, yeah. Uh, so Google, all right. I'm not seeing that divergence as compared to Apple on the MACD. Very clearly, um, Apple is this. Let me go lower. But Google, Google didn't even really come in. Right. It had this divergence, but it didn't have the other one. Yeah, and I actually have a short signals on that because of that, of the MACD divergence. Um, let's put it in perspective, the pair. So it was doing this. Let's put it in a different color. And that's your divergence. And right now it's just sideways, just within this channel. The channel. Yeah. So that's a sideways, that's not divergence or convergence, it's a sideways. This guy, do this matter. Yeah, that's, that's nothing, it's just this right here. So, meta on the level two indicators, Tonchin channel, staying above. Uh, yeah, this nice false hammer. Uh, yeah. 
So do I add right now? No, I don't want to open the trade, even if it's above the medium line, the bow section of Dungeon Channel, because the market is in the bear mode. If the market goes back into the bow mode, cross over the medium line on the Dungeon Channel, uh, the border market, the indexes, the QQQ, the socks, I expect this to break up. So this peak, so this will be a big breakout tray. While the Apple is crossing over the medium line of the Dungeon Channel, in that sense. While the matter, have to wait, it will be become a breakout tray on the breakout upside. Because relatively, once it's stronger, once it's weaker, that's why. In that sense, my Apple is strong. I mean, weaker, so it went lower. While Meta was going sideways, even the markets were crapping out. So the buyers are holding it up. So you look for the breakout tray instead. Uh, yeah, you look for a breakout tray. In that sense, actually, I should I should start start using a further another signal. To uh, another hint, in that sense, in a drawing for potential breakout. Um, so what should we choose? Uh, breakout. I would like to use a rocket. Where's the rocket? I was clicking on this. So there we go. Yeah. So breakout will be a rocket, in that sense. Go. Looking for it to take off, right? Breakout. Yeah. Waiting for a breakout. Yeah. You have to break this level, so let's put it this peak. Waiting for the breakout. Well, Apple is crossover or the dungeon channel. Yes. Yeah. And maybe we use another graphic. I love graphs, graphics. They make it more interesting um, crossing over a channel what, which uh, indicator which graphics should we use the question become mm. yeah, let's take an airplane yeah if you cross over that medium line you have to do a kind of like global crossover right. then then we have a Right, on the both side. And that is on back of a long established trend. You see? Not because of that, it's just, it's just crossing over. No, a trend has, has sown itself already, has had tablets that confirmed itself. That's why I would do that. Otherwise, I would not do that. I would not do a chop around and always cross over here. Right? Because this, yeah, it, it did make a trend on this period, but the re reversal invalidated the whole trend. More than 50% retracement, that previous trend is invalidated. Okay. Right here, this one, right, we use a Fibonacci retracement to measure it. And you can see 0.38. Okay, so it's still about 50%. The trend is still intact in that sense. Right, it just noise right now the bottom market a lot of reason is not ready to go yet it's not ready to reestablish and then take off again so but if you go below 50 percent retracement now that's done that's for example who's neo neo did that i was making good money and then it just crapped out like this oh my god look so this whole thing this whole peak this whole trend get invalidated once you cross below 50% line, there's no point of buying this now until it breaks back out. You are, Lee is good. I still holding off on this. Yeah, Lee is good. Expand. Yeah, expand is good. Yeah, these are okay. I have option on these two guys. I have cash secure puts and they're making me money. Neo. All right, last one for Neo and Lee. Lee make me money, Neo lose me money, but my, my Lee make more money than Neo, so overall, I still make money, but I make a lot less, because Neo was weak. But right now, on Lee and Xpand, on my option trades, my cash secure push, they both are 
making money. But in fact, in a couple of weeks, uh, the weeks of this month, I will cash it in. Yeah, probably let it expire, but it's holding up. Market's crapping, crapping out, and they're holding up. Right, it's a Shanghai large cap index crapping out, they're holding up. Well, what does strength tell me that? They're strong. Hold. You can hold these guys. Yeah. Neo, no point to open that tray again, roll into another tray. Right. I don't compound a loser. I want to compound winners. I want to buy the winners and buy more winners. That's how you make money. Forget about the losers. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on. Yeah. So right now, it's 9.55. Um, back to the border market. Um, it's just flat, going sideways, not doing much right now. And after a three consecutive down day and a large day like yesterday, I expect today will, will be a little breather. Unless there's fundamental news that comes in and take it up or take it down. Take the market up, take the market down. It's fundamental news. Nothing substantial, nothing substantial that's important enough to move the market right now. That's what it is. But Dan Jones is clear under 200 days moving average. My spider, SPY, is approaching it. And QQQ is the stronger of the three. Stay well above it, staying buoyant at this point. Again, I'm looking for trade. I'm looking for the market to recover. Right? And then I, if it breaks down again, if it breaks down, I have no short trade right now. Right? Because sector I'm looking at have a nice trend. If it continue to break down, any if the whole sector move back down below 50%, then it will invalidate that. That, that earlier the trend this year, the first two quarter, it's the six months trend earlier this year, then I have to wait longer for things to come back in. So what we'll see, what we'll see is that as long as SOX, NASDAQ, QQQ hold above this 200 day moving average, and this, this earlier trend, the AI push is intact. And I'm just gearing up for a long term trend falling. That's why I'm gearing up right now. Now the other play, my level one cash secure put, is I want me. It might kick in earlier. It might kick in if I see false hammer. Even without the market's blessing, in that sense, if market turns, I want to see false hammer. Then I will go in and start laying these cash secure puts across the semi on on the on stock that are on the QQQs because QQQ is the strongest source of three and they're holding up well and then when it cross over midline I start buying the stock and then when it break out I start buying more of the stock okay. so that's the game plan in that sense in the sense if market show me a false hammer or, or and then the instrument is turning around too I might really seriously if it's a good point start laying out here secure puts those level one trades but my focus again is where the trend forms are. I want this trend, I want to see this trend reattach, this trend come back. I want to compound and layer my position in every step of the way it's compound up and making me high. That would be the that will be the play for for CBO future. So yeah, so this way basically is my mind is established this game plan. For the next three months, six months, a year or so. Of course, if the situation changes, if the macro environment change, then my investment theme, my long-term trading theme, my macro analysis will change along with it too. You have to be very flexible. Okay? Market is always right. And I will always be wrong. It's just market will always prove me wrong. So never go against the market. Read the market, understand the market, and go with the flow. Go where the money is. Very important. My opinion is meaningless. It's useless. The only one that's useful is the one that will result in a game, in a monetary game. And how do I translate into monetary game? Is I have good setup, I have repeatable process, and a scalable process. That's the first thing I learned. As someone once taught me, how to make money. The key is repeatable process, scalable process. Right? 
and that can apply perfectly of course the stock market the bonds market the, the financial market that's why it's capitalism to the finest I, I, my overhead my overhead just feeding myself feeding my family I don't pay I don't need to pay for office space I don't need to pay for anything I don't need a retail store I don't I don't I don't need customer it's the thing I am my own customer and I am completely in charge this is capitalism at the finest playing the market it's being a market speculator okay so that's the morning uh, right now I'm I'm still waiting observing and until markets confirm and tell me otherwise I have to be patient I'll wait you can observe until the time is right until my setups are triggered then I will start opening trades again there's no no way you can force a trade no way you can rush this you have to wait for this right development the right setup and then when it triggers you goes in right now I'm just pre-planning seeing the possible scenarios looking for the possible setups and what will I do A or I do B or I do C when they happens and that's a lot more than A B C D E actually going on in my head right now um, so okay so I'm gonna f and this finish this up today's video this morning for the morning if anything I'll upload more uh, if not then it will be tomorrow thanks for watching remember prosperity happens never by accident it is plans accumulated the plan ahead and accumulate your plans that go according to the setup and when the opportunities presents itself till next time